Yeah, I th but I think that was a, the conclusion for now. It's just like when you have that space of enoughness, that's where abundance can reverberate from because it, it you feel complete. You know, I think that's like the biggest thing, like the biggest priority is, is to cultivate that feeling of wholeness and com completeness because from that space, you're already complete. You're enough. You know, you can have the the most fucked up belief system about yourself to put it frankly and you're still enough and you can be isolated by yourself struggling to connect with people and you're still enough and you can be failing at the things that you're trying to do and you're still enough and you can have zero or negative dollars in your bank account and you're still enough like it's a reflection of how you're viewing yourself that these things are happening on some level you know maybe you are feeling like i'm not worthy but it doesn't mean you're not worthy it's just your belief that you're not worthy but no matter what position you are in life, I feel like that's just the truth. You're enough. And um, there's nothing you have to do or not do. It's just the fact of the matter. Hello. If you're looking for deep truth and authenticity in a world that feels more and more, more, and more artificial every day, you've come to the right place. If you're in need of a breath of fresh air, welcome. I'm Reagan. I'm Bianca. And this is a Breath of Fresh Air podcast. Ooh, I feel like it's been a long time since we did that, but it's actually not. It's been like two weeks. Well, <laughs> since we've done it online. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but we did record. That was last week, right? <laughs> it, it, it was. It was. That's it so had strange. to have been last week, but it feels like it was like a month ago. <laughs> If you guys don't know, Bianca and I met in person and it was just such a phenomenal time. It warped space and time. And yeah, we're still catching up with that, I think. <laughs> Definitely. Because we were both like, wait, that was last week. What? <laughs> strange. strange. Very strange. But we did have the opportunity to chat briefly before recording and Reagan had some beautiful things coming through for her. So I'll just let you go ahead and just get the ball rolling with that. Yeah, so many amazing connections that we were talking about. And so the first thing I want to just dive right into is the con the concept of enoughness. This is what's really been on my heart a lot lately is abundance and realizing that in a lot of ways, abundance is actually enoughness because, you know, it's like allowing yourself to, to be enough, to be good enough, to allowing whatever you have, the things in your life to be enough. You know, I think it's great to strive for more. And I think that that's something that naturally occurs anyways. We're always growing and expanding. Um, but I think the more we can cultivate this attitude of enoughness, especially for many of us who do deal with like these deep unworthiness patterns, um, this is something that is really beneficial and that's actually the key to to not to first feeling more abundant in all areas of your life and then actually attracting more abundance instead of being in this more scarcity mindset which creeps in you know and i think bianca has such an amazing like um thing to add to this but it, it, it creeps in so subtly, you know, I think especially the more you work on it, the more it comes in in such subtle ways when you're doing something creative or doing something that matters to you. It's it can be very easy unconsciously to start falling back, I think, into these patterns of like you start you can just sort of feel it. And a lot of times we don't want to we don't want to admit it at first because we want to just like push through it. But kind of realizing a lot of times that maybe like are we when we're creating, I think we want to create from you know, from love, from abundance, from purity, not creating from this place of kind of desperation of like, I need to prove myself. Because then the more you do that, the more what you're creating is going to kind of just like, almost snowball, sometimes it feels like into more of this, like keep needing to prove, prove myself, prove ourselves. And, you know, I think for a lot of us, that's not what we're trying to create. So many places the conversation could go just from that. But one thing that came up from what you were saying is, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the show Insecure. I know you're not big into like TV. I haven't seen it. But it's like this show on HBO and the star of the show is like a writer and director of the show kind of situation. And basically she had this like class, like it's called masterclass. And she was talking about that idea of like, 
when she's writing, she doesn't, she like was like, don't write for the audience. Like when you're writing or like, don't show it to a bunch of people, like have a very small number of people that you're like trying to make laugh. If you're like doing something comedic or like one or two people that you're like, I really care about their opinion and, you know, like your own opinion and that one or two people, but really keeping it like kind of close to the vest when you're creating, because, you know, I think that's when it slips into like, in terms of like artistic creation, when you're like, Oh, well, what will the mass general population think about what I'm doing? Or like, which is kind of a question of like, what will they think about me? Um, you know, or like that com comes in. Um, and so that's what came through for me. Cause I think that's when it becomes like a validation thing. Like, what will everyone think of me versus just like, I trust this person or I trust myself enough to, to know when something feels right creatively or when something feels like mm, maybe that just doesn't align with what I was trying to do and being okay with not caring too early. Cause I think it, there's a phase for like when you're putting it out and you've already created it, like there's a marketing side river, but I love that. She was saying, when you're creating, <laughs> keep it kind of like, keep it close to the vest a little bit. Yes, I think that's an important tip with anything. You know, I've definitely um, stuck to that over the years because, yeah, if you share it with too many people or people who aren't going to get it before it's ready, then it can really kind of like stunt the momentum, I think, of your creation because a lot of people don't really, a lot of people tend to not have that level of faith in general, you know, let alone in um, other people's dreams and ideas, which is crazy, but that's just the world we, we live in that we're so courageously trying to rise ourselves up out of to not, you know, have to be bitter, you know, I think it's about just bettering ourselves and rising from these ashes, you know, rising from these ashes of, again, whether it's doubt or unworthiness or discouragement, I feel like those ones have been coming up deeply for me. And when I feel into them, they're so massive and I really feel so much that it's not even just me, you know, it's like, it's so much bigger than me. And it, it makes me kind of, you know, see it in humanity as a whole, the amount of like doubt and discouragement. And so I guess what's coming up for me at this moment is just to, a reminder to give ourselves so much credit. Um, I think it's so easy to be like, again, I think this is part of the inner work. It's also, it's also internal, but you know, when we're thinking, when we're doing something or we're stumbling or we're struggling, remember to give yourself credit because what we're doing really is so grand and it really is assisting all of humanity just by doing it and creating these new neural pathways, just creating these new possibilities by the grit and the hard work that it takes to literally put like pursue things to the end. Like it's not for the faint of heart, you know, I feel like I say that a lot, but it, it really is. So remember to give yourself credit because the amount of resistance that we all have to face in our lives, especially when we are doing something that is meaningful to us, um, it's so grand, but it, and, it, and it's so worthwhile too. You know, you have these moments that are just truly surreal, but you know, you also have these moments of just um, having to feel that and process that ancient pain that's bigger than you, you know, and and, and working through it. Got caught up listening, damn. <laughs> no, but what, what you were saying you're, in the very um, first part, it what I thought of was a lot of people are, I have to see it to believe it. And I feel like creating is like, I have to believe it to see it. Like, it's like you, you just flip that. And so that's what can be really frustrating you know, when you're trying to explain it to someone and you see it, like, even when it's like, you're believing it to see it, like there's a vision there, but it's not tangible yet. And a lot of people are like, okay, I guess. And, and a lot of people, once it's tangible, will be like, oh, <laughs> oh, I see now, you know, but if you're relying on that to, you shouldn't ever really rely on that. And if you're relying on that, that's when it's like, you're kind of trading the integrity of that vision for you know, someone co-signing it. And then I love the conversation about worthiness. And I wanted to ask you, you know, earlier you said something about worthiness, like unworthiness patterns. Could you talk more about that? Like maybe examples of that or how it shows up for people? Yeah, definitely. 
Um, so I think a lot of the people I would, I would feel, I would assume watching this are, are probably aware to some degree of, you know, maybe they're, if they have unworthiness, I think everyone has this, this is, this is like a, this is kind of just the human condition, uh, but maybe some people more than others, just based on, you know, how they, how their childhoods were and whatnot. Um, so I think the more you, you work on it, it gets more and more subtle, but you still have to keep kind of, you just have to keep refining yourself. And so even when it gets more subtle, it might be less like tragically deep as it used to be, but it's still, I think it's, it still is um, painful. It's still frustrating. So I think an example would be, um, you know, if you're working on, I think a lot of people go through this, for example, a, a creative project, I'll say in this case, like a business or something. And you start out with like these pure intentions of like, you know, I want to help people. I want to use my gift to inspire people, to help people, to, you know, express myself. And, you know, I find for myself as I continue to go on that, and then you're trying to manifest something in the world. Anytime you try to manifest something big, and this is why I think we should all dream big. Uh, you're going to just come up against your biggest patterns. And it really is such a frustrating thing, but it really is such a um, mark of greatness, I think, to keep doing that and not give up, you know, because it really will. <laughs> I saw this really funny meme today. It's kind of ridiculous, but I kind of want to say it. It's, um, <laughs> it's kind of, I don't mean to be, <laughs> Bianca's looking at me. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I like I I'm like waiting, like, I'm like, wait. <laughs> I have to say it. No, because it's so funny. I hope I don't ruin it. But it's kind of crude, I think. But it's it's not. But it's like, life keeps swallowing me up and shitting me out. And it's like, but I'm built like a piece of corn. <laughs> so that's kind of what it feels like. You know, it's kind of like you do. You keep dying and being reborn. But it's like, you're never, you you you're just sort of being more and more refined through all of this. But to answer your question, so, you know, you have this sort of, you have this, this vision, but it's like, as you go on it, your patterns come up. So if you have, in this case, unworthiness patterns, um, you start to feel like it's just not good enough. You know, people call imposter syndrome. You start to drive, your, you can drive yourself mad in these moments because you start it, things, you're going to have these moments of contrast. You're just going to have it where they, that are needed. They're literally part of your process divinely to teach you. And you'll always find that, you know, but when you encounter it, a lot of times we, we all have this knee jerk reaction of like, you know, the unworthiness again, like, oh my gosh, like, why is this happening? You know, this, I need to fix myself. I need to fix this. I need to change something. I need to change something. And I think it's not so much about that as, as, it, as it's about just like, you know, if, if you're operating from this mode, you can, you can feel it, you know, when you're operating from like this more like source, God energy you're just kind of more flowing and inspired versus when you're coming from like this this more like wounded place you feel you just even if it's subtle you feel more desperate you feel more needy you feel more like oh I need this to be like this I need this why isn't this um happening and you know it's nothing it's nothing to be ashamed of you know it's just something I think the, you know that's my goal is to be really conscious in my work so that when moments like that come up I can instead of just trying to push through it from that space, take a moment to like really, um, you know, honor myself and honor, you know, that part of me that feels that way and, and give love to that and just kind of work, you know, not try to bypass that before I continue, because I think that's whatever work we're doing, it's going to show up in that work, which is fine. You know, again, it's all a learning lesson, but that's just something I've been, that's an example that I've been going through. I'm going to be watching this back and taking detailed notes. <laughs> I just feel like it's, it literally feels like such a ripe conversation. It feels like, which part do I ask a question about? Because it's like, if I steer the conversation this way, it's sometimes hard to get back to some of the other really like important things that you're saying. My question after like, you know, listening to things you're saying is how do you, how do you feel like shame plays into that? You know, the process of creating even, you know, admitting that there is a worthiness wound in the first place, like sitting with yourself to be like, hmm, this is happening. I feel like my heart just opened because you literally just asked the best question ever. 
honestly, um, because shame is, you know, it's known to be like the lowest emotion on like the whole like spectrum. And I would agree with that. And so a lot of times any of us, when we feel that shame, again, a lot of it is subconscious. That's why it can be tricky. It's subconscious. And, you know, it's again, like Carl Jung says, making the unconscious conscious. It's unconscious because we really don't, especially with shame, almost more than anything, we don't want to feel that. We don't want to admit that even to ourselves, let alone to other people. So I think that's a really, really good question. Um, because it's things like that, that I, I want to, I just, it's like, I need to just like write it down and put it somewhere where I can see it all the time. So I can like remind myself, you know, to, to check, kind of check myself with these things. Um, so they don't creep in unconsciously and, and create this sort of like unnecessary devastation. Obviously, if you're doing it, then in a way it's necessary because you have to learn from it. But remembering, remembering is such an important thing. Um, but yeah, it, it can be very shameful because that, that whole energy feels ashamed. You know, that whole unworthiness energy is, is very, it feels very um, ashamed and even embarrassed in a way, I think, just to be, you know, at the core of it. It's like, it's embarrassed just to be. Um, so I think that's a really, really good question to, to ask ourselves, you know, is like, because if you can start to feel that, you know, recognize that shame in yourself, and then take that time to feel it and um, work through it, however that is for you. Definitely feeling it, but also, you know, I like to sometimes um, just kind of journal on it or um, have like a vision on it or, you know, do something like this where we can really process it. And then, and then it's clear, you know, then like that level of shame is now clear. And when you do return back to your project, you'll definitely feel more of an opening you know and then you'll and then you'll keep working and you'll be creative and then you'll probably have another moment where you come up against maybe that same thing but it's a little bit deeper and it's like you just keep going deeper and deeper you know it's kind of that evolution I hope that answers your question because that was a really really good question about shame Reagan come on you're always blowing my head up I asked <laughs> <laughs> I really, I'd really feel like you're blowing my head up right now. <laughs> but <laughs> um, when you were talking, though, you, you quoted Carl Jung, and you actually made me remember that I, I wanted to share this quote on this episode. And thank you for saying that Carl Jung quote because you just reminded me. But it's one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. She's very on brand for for Carl Jung. <laughs> you know but that's kind of what I feel is at the core of this conversation it's like even when you said you know enoughness is abundance it's like a lot of times I feel like the conversation is geared towards well what you know people think abundance it's like well when I get more when I have that or like when I you know when I'm there then I'll feel you know right so even pausing it as mm, maybe <laughs> when we feel that that it's enough, that we're enough, that what we have, what we do is enough. That's what actually opens the gate versus, you know, chasing this dream, not this dream in the sense of something creative, but a fantasy. It's the difference between a dream, a vision, and a fantasy. And I think that sometimes those fantasies can, I, I, something that came through for me recently was like, um, you know, the more you try to escape a situation, the more you're actually trapped in it. So when we can feel like we're enough, period, point blank, you know, I think you're right that that is like what opens that gateway to abundance. And I feel like, I feel like this is another conversation and I feel like we've kind of had it, but I feel like that feeling of enoughness paired with gratitude is just unlocks so many things. And it's, literally accessible at any point in time even though it doesn't feel like it is to the ego it literally is we can always you know do something that can shift us into a state of embodying feeling like we're enough or a, a state of gratitude mm, yes so beautiful you know because in enoughness you know is who we really are you know, as a soul, you know, we are eternally enough, we are eternally everything, you know, successful, complete, abundant, everything, you know, we all have this inside of us, 
And that's who we really truly are. You know, that's a fact. So it's like tapping into that. It's like bringing that, you know, bringing that awareness again to the ego because, you know, not enoughness, that's the ego, you know, that's what the ego basically feeds on and, and thrives off of is just like that, um, not being enough, being a victim, not, um, you know, all these types of things that they're really painful too. You know, you really have to have compassion for yourself. And, um, you know, I think that's the best course of action there when that does arise is to have so much love and compassion for yourself, not trying to fight that part of yourself, but, you know, truly seeing it for what it is and realizing that it's just a shadow, you know, it's just a shadow or it's your inner child. It's just a part that needs to be shown light upon. And it, and then it's not this um, big insurmountable thing that we kind of actually make it out to be, you know, and it's actually something that is, is, is pretty small once we really confronted um yeah so i i agree the more you the more because the more you can feel enough and that can be the hardest thing to do you know don't underestimate that especially for you know again a lot of us with you know it's like a lot of us just the way we grew up was it wasn't it for whatever reason you know it was just it didn't ever feel like it was enough for you know our parents or our, our first relationships so just to cultivate that enoughness it's, it's like that, I think that is a ticket to abundance because the more abundance I've received in my life, whether it was, you know, financial or just in relationships or love or creativity, it comes through that space of it's enough now. Did you cut yourself off? Sometimes it feels <laughs> like you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you're so right. Well, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to like, I want to give you the chance to share if you have anything coming up. I mean, I do, but I'm holding, like, I'm, like, taking mental notes. I'm like, oh, that was, okay, this point. So, <laughs> good. Yeah, I, but I think that was a, the conclusion for now. It's just, like, when you have that space of enoughness, that's where abundance can reverberate from because it, it you feel complete you know I think that's like the biggest thing like the biggest priority is is to cultivate that feeling of wholeness and com completeness because from that space you're already complete <laughs> and so everything you create is is a is 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 a fun adventure for you and I think that's how we all start out and then in the process that's where it gets hard because it's almost like this um, duality of like, we know, you know, we're trying to hold on to the truth of we're complete. We're already complete. We don't need success of or any kind of outcome to be complete. And at the same time, you know, we're, we're creating something. So, you know, it's intense because it's like all of these things again, come start coming up. So it's like, it's definitely like a really fine balance. Yeah. It's so many things that came up from, from what you said and, um, it might seem random, but you were talking about how sometimes it seems like this really huge thing, but actually it's small. And the image that came to my mind is like when people do the little hand puppets and, you know, like on the wall, it looks like this huge, you know, wolf or dog or whatever, and, you know, like these light tricks and illusion. It's like, oh my God, you know, you could really scare a little kid because they're like, look how big that thing is. But if you like turn, you're like, oh, it's just somebody's hand and they're making it look like a wolf. Like they're making it seem like this huge thing when it's not and it never was. And just kind of going, not really going back, but, you know, something that did come up in my mind in terms of the shame conversation, and I feel like it's related, is I believe that shame proliferates in silence. So, you know, and then that ties to this idea of what's mentionable is manageable, which is kind of like what you're saying. If you can shine a light on that thing that you're feeling a lot of shame about and you can put, you know, maybe literally or metaphorically voice that, you know, literally look at that and um, it can feel really overwhelming. But like you said, once you do that, you know, it kind of just like you, that energy clears or it can become less dense. Sometimes sitting with something one time, it doesn't clear the whole thing, depending on how dense it is. Sometimes it takes multiple kind of like sessions of letting it go. You know, I've personally found, but you will feel that difference, you know, if you sit with it and 
I found that it's really helpful if you really have people you trust or care about you or like, you know, if you do, you know, have a therapist or something or even journaling, telling someone, you know, something that you felt a lot of shame about that, you know, is going to be like really loving and compassionate towards you, especially for a person who struggles with that right in this phase of life. Like you struggle to be compassionate with yourself. If you have a friend or someone that you that, you know, cares about you and will be like receiving and warm to you, like tell them. And allow that to see, I believe like a lot of our, like you mentioned, a lot of this shame comes from those first relationships. Like sometimes we get really hurt in relationships and we can have a lot of, you know, hurt, but I believe that we, we also heal in relationships if it's with healthy people who have that ability to hold space and be compassionate with us. And so I think there's a lot of power in one, just like sitting with yourself. You know, I think that's primary. I mean, we have to be able to do that. But if you have to take steps to that, like sharing with a friend, you know, and getting to that point of like, okay, you know, I acknowledged it. Like I admitted this thing that I felt like would make me unlovable. And then this person still treated me with love. So I guess, you know, even if we have to do that, I think those things can be helpful. Mm, yes, that is, again, just like so much heart opening information. Uh, and I love that you mentioned that. I feel like it even builds off our last episode of, you know, everything is relationships. Um, that's something I'm learning right now, too, is not to underestimate the power of, you know, having someone solid, you know, a really good friend or someone in your life that you can share these things with. You know, I think that's why you and I benefit so much from doing this podcast. You know, it's just being able to share what you're going through and be seen. There's so much power in being seen. And I think for myself, for sure, and for many of us, a lot of times when we're going through things, we want to isolate. And sometimes that's necessary. You know, sometimes, you know, maybe we really do need that time to process it. But I'm also learning, like, again, as someone with, you know, these sort of like unworthiness patterns, it's like, I don't, you know, I don't want to ask for help. You know, I really don't. So it's like some, so that's actually a way I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone, you know, is, is is when I need help, you know, even if it's just an encouraging word is, you know, you know, is calling someone or talking to someone who, again, I know is safe and trust, tr like I trust them, who can just, you know, help, you know, we're here to help each other, we're here to support each other. And that's really all it takes, you know, I don't need someone to like, you know, go crazy. It's just like someone just to be there and, and remind you, you know, like, it's okay. Like, you know, you're, you're not worthless or like, you know, whatever it is that your crazy mind might be like spinning around. Uh, and then again, like you said, like that is like so healing to have, like we heal in relationships. So it's like, instead of just constantly isolating yourself and isolating yourself, you know, sometimes it is really important to, to, to have the courage, I think, to um, reach out to people, you know, and ask for help because a lot of us, we don't want to ask for help. Yeah. No, I really relate to that. Like, it's like, oh, I'll just figure it out or like, I'll do it. Or like, you know, like, no, I don't want to bother them. I think that's another thing. I think, you know, feeling like a bother that, I mean, to be really vulnerable and, and, uh, and transparent. Cause I feel like, like I said, I think it can be really healing. I've been thinking about that a lot recently, like this fear of, oh my gosh, what if people really see me? Like the human, just all the human mess and just stuff that's like, I feel shame about. I feel shame about the fact that sometimes I feel like a bother or like, and, and I know where that comes from. And then I have shame about the place that it comes from. And I don't want to talk about that either. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, what if I was just really honest? What if I was just like, yeah, sometimes I feel like a bother. And so I don't always ask for help when I need it. Or I'm afraid that over time, if I am a bother and someone's not telling me, they'll, they'll just be like, you know what? Like, actually, I don't like you. <laughs> like, if I'm really just you know, a person asking for help. What if someone decides like, and that's an abandonment wound and I don't want to look at that. And I don't want to look at where that comes from. And it's all, it's all related. And I feel like it's interesting to me how I can feel our conversations that we've had weaving together. Because when you said like sharing with a friend, it's not like you have to go crazy. It's not like you're trying to solve that person's problem. It's just holding space, but that codependent wound will have you being like, how do I fix it? <laughs> how do I fix it for this other person? But no, like, like you said, sometimes the power is just being there, like just being there for someone. Let, if someone wants help, let them ask you, you know what I mean? If they want something more, they'll say, Hey, can you help me? And if they don't ask you, it's pretty much safe to assume that all they wanted was you to just listen. They didn't necessarily want or need advice. Most people know what they need to do. 
you know, people know what they need to do. And that person is more equipped to know what they need to do than an outsider, realistically. You know, sometimes some someone from an outside vantage can help, but only when asked. <laughs> you know, it's like your friend's like, I'm going through this and this. You don't need to like make them a bulleted list. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is me talking to me. But um, <laughs> Yeah, I love the way that I can feel the conversations weaving together because it all works together. Like healing that codependent pattern helps us show up better for other people in a more healthy way, you know, in a way that leaves them feeling empowered and not like, huh, well, now I feel like I can only process this with my friend. Like, that's not the goal. It's, you know, I know that I can go to you. I know that I, I know that I'm safe with you. And I know that I will leave feeling a little bit more healed than when I first started talking to you. Mm, I love it so much. I feel it weaving together too. Um, you know, and, and I, I, I even have to go back again cause it's all like, you know, in real time, I feel like I'm just like making these connections of, of how, how beautiful it really is. And, and one of the blessings I think about getting older is, you know, obviously you have to kind of put yourself out there, but you can, start to to make new friends and new relationships that you know if you're the ones you're born into don't support you um you can find ones that do and find people who are going to see you and are going to respect you and you know truly want the best for you and and be in a similar state of like health where you know they're not just like projecting everything or tearing every tearing you down where they they really want to build you up as they want to build themselves up you know, relationships like that are, I think, the most meaningful thing, you know, honestly. And I'm just, like, realizing it more and more. Of course, like, at the end of the day, it's always, like, we have to do our inner work. We're responsible for ourselves. But, from yeah, this is, like, just coming up really strong right now. It's just the importance of healing through those relationships because humans are social creatures. And, again, for me, someone who – and I think it's necessary, but for, like, the past few years, really, has it having been – um, I feel like as like introverted and isolated as I can get away with, <laughs> you know, I still have relationships, but, um, you know, just being really, really to myself. And I've always kind of been that way, actually. It's just kind of dawning on me like, wow, like it, it's like the, the healing in relationships really is, I think, like the the bread and the butter, because it's like we're supposed to be a community. We're supposed to be a village of like again, we have to have responsibility for ourselves, but we're not meant to do everything by ourselves. Like we're, we're just not, we're not built that way. Humans are social creatures. We're all meant to kind of like, um, you know, create and support together. So I think actually, you know, speaking of wanting to build communities and create this new earth, this new paradigm, it's, it's reliant on our ability to have relationships. So being able to have these kinds of people in your life and have this vulnerability and have this connection where, Again, no one's perfect, but you can actually, you can rely on people, you know, you can rely on people to, um, you know, whatever your, you know, situation is or agreement is, again, at least at, at the least to support each other and hold each other up, especially in tough times. I feel emotional as usual. <laughs> because I mean, like, I feel like an outpouring of love, like, I just feel so much love to, like, particularly anyone listening, obviously always love to Reagan. Reagan knows that period. It's like baseline, but I just so much love to like anyone listening. Cause it's like, I just feel like there's probably people listening that maybe have never heard a conversation like this or, or heard anyone have a conversation like this. Like it's okay to be vulnerable. Like it's okay to need people. And like maybe people have heard that, but maybe it'll hit different. I don't know why I feel that way. Maybe it's just because it's hitting different for me right now. And I'm just hopeful that it's hitting the same way for anyone listening. Um, because I feel like it is so important and everyone is deserving and worthy of that, of, of those relationships. And I mean, I know personally that sometimes it can feel like you're not if you haven't had it. Yeah, I found that like if you've been through things with like family or people close to you when you're young and they're older, for example, like adults and you're a kid, you don't process it as like something's wrong with them. You process it as something's wrong with me. And so it can feel difficult to navigate relationships going forward if your default assumption is something's wrong with you. <laughs> and you can feel like 
oh, like maybe I don't deserve good relationships. Like maybe this is what I should just be used to because something's obviously wrong with me. And so I think coming to a point of like, you know, you're going to have to, if you feel that way, as I know that I've felt in the past, like you have to start changing the narrative and like, and sometimes it can even feel uncomfortable if someone is kind, like, I'm like, why are you being so kind? Like, uh, uh, that's, you know, and just like, maybe we, we have to let things feel weird if our normal is not functional. Yes, that's beautifully put. And that's exactly what, you know, what we're talking about with, with growing and expanding. It's, that's exactly it is it's gonna feel weird. It's gonna be uncomfortable because it's like, we're all to some degree moving out of dysfunction because we're evolving. So it's like to move out of these dysfunctional states. And that's actually a pure example of how not enoughness creeps in. That's a perfect example right there, you know, that everyone can relate to is like, oh, you know, um, there's something wrong with me or like, I'm not good enough. Like there's so many ways that that shadow can manifest. Um, So it's like coming out of that, it is uncomfortable, but it's like, you, you know, in a way you don't have to like, like literally, but like for your own health and sanity and well being, like you have to come out of that, you know, you have to like push yourself, you know, however you can, I think to start coming out um, of, you know, these, these um, states of not enoughness, you know, however that looks to you. And again, if you're so blessed, to have someone in your life that can affirm that for you because it's so easy you know for others you know someone you know especially someone you love comes to you and says you know I don't feel good enough you know it's it's really easy to be like come on you know you're just down or like you're you know you're so beautiful and just like list off all of their like good attributes that are true uh it's a lot harder to do that for yourself so I think to be able to do that for yourself is important but it's it, again, like, I'm just, like, realizing on a new level, like, it's really good to have relationships where people will do that for you, because, again, that's, like, that's a social healing thing that, that I think we all need. Yeah, and I love, I love this conversation. I, I mean, it's definitely, a for me, that thing of, like, the thing you feel led to talk about is, like, the thing you need to hear. <laughs> it's, like, Yes, this is a very good, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but on a serious note, I, the thing coming through for me too, is like in a conversation about enoughness. And I, I like love the way that you're kind of like just laying it all out because I feel like it's really important to transition from if someone is in this mindset of like, oh, well, when I'm even like when I'm this healed, when I get to that point, then I'll be enough. That's another trap because no, like even right now you're enough. And and I think that's the thing too, because it can feel <laughs> agonizing or beautiful depending on your perspective. But I love how Garen Jones says it. It's like, you're always in a process. You're always in a process. When that process ends, it'll just be another process. Whether it's, you know, you know, a process of something with your health or, you know, more like, uh, something maybe even material like your finances whatever it is relationships whatever there's always a process it's always going to be something some area that you can evolve in you can always you know be quote unquote better in some way so it's not about oh well once i've like i don't feel unworthy ever then i'm enough or when i have only the best relationships then i'll be enough cuz then you know it's like no it's like you're enough you know, you can have the, the most fucked up belief system about yourself, to put it frankly, and you're still enough. And you can be isolated by yourself, struggling to connect with people, and you're still enough. And you can be failing at the things that you're trying to do, and you're still enough. And you can have zero or negative dollars in your bank account, and you're still enough. Like, it's a reflection of how you're viewing yourself that these things are happening on some level. You know, maybe you are feeling like I'm not worthy, but it doesn't mean you're not worthy. It's just your belief that you're not worthy. But no matter what position you are in life, I feel like that's just the truth. You're enough. And um, there's nothing you have to do or not do. It's just the fact of the matter. Mm, There's some fire coming through. I can feel it so much. And I love how you said, even if you don't feel like you're enough, you're still enough. 
or you said, um, once I, once I feel like, once I always feel like I'm enough, I'll be enough. I love that. That makes so much sense to me because it's like, that is, I think, a impossible goalpost that our ego likes to set for us. That's like surefire to, to, you know, fail and, and pull us back into like this kind of more inverted realm. Um, because that's something I'm learning so much too in this process of like, because another thing I'm, I'm one of, I guess, like keywords you could say for me right now of my focus is consistency and just being more consistent in my life instead of just fluttering, you know, all over the place. I'm, you know, trying to be consistent. So, which, I, which has been an amazing experience for me, but it's like, so I'm almost, I'm almost more consistently coming up against these things. And I'm really, really learning exactly what you just said there of like, um, like, because again, like if I could just emphasize, like feeling that stuff come up is a part of the process. And it's it's just a part of the process. Like it's not you being off of your path. It's not that there's something wrong with you. It's not that um, you're being like sabotaged, even though it feels like that in the moment. And again, you just have to feel that out and let that be. But again, like once you work through that, and if you can remember, which is what I'm trying to do, you'll see that that's always a very necessary lesson that's that's that you have to learn to get to where you want to be you know because this is you know this is like the the rough side of law of attraction that I feel like people don't talk about enough is like it's aligning you so it's like yeah you're you know you're attracting these blessings but it's like it's literally aligning you know your your very self your very personality so it's like all of these things you know you want this life of um, you know, feeling this extreme worthiness. Well, it's like, you have to start feeling that now, you know, it's not just like, um, oh, unworthiness came up. Like, this is the worst thing ever. I'm doomed. Like, I'm never going to feel worthy. Like, you know, that stuff will come up, but it's like, I guess like just having that sort of like firmness and tenacity to, to see it, to work through it and to realize you are enough and to really coax yourself in a way and remind yourself I am enough even when you don't feel like you're enough because again those moments are just going to happen there's almost nothing that can stop it they have to happen for your growth because when that arises those feelings those those even deep feelings of I'm not enough but then you also feeling that and having the grace and the firmness to say I see you but I am enough I am enough I choose to believe I am enough I choose that I am enough and you just keep doing that intense inner work that that is going to that is just going to like literally that's 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 just I have no words for that like that experience is just the most amazing thing I think that's true evolution because you start that's when you know however that process plays out you start to really step into that you know it's an inside job you start to really step into that worthiness until eventually there does come a time where you're no longer phased by these thoughts, you know, and then surely, you know, we're always working. So something else will come to the forefront, something maybe more subtle and deep, but there will come a point then where like this, like this certain degree of worthiness you're really struggling with now will come up and it won't even have any power over you anymore because you already, you know, you've already done that work. Hmm. That, that just, it sounds easy. <laughs> But it, it's truly very much like, did you, what did you say earlier? Gritty, like grit, you know? And I feel like there's like multiple angles that I've, that I've experienced with like embodying worthiness. And I feel like one of them is, I don't know where I got this from, but I mean, it's like kind of like psychology, but I don't know if anybody's backed it up, but I just believe that, mm -hmm. um, you can kind of tell a person's motivations by what they do. Like a person does the things that they're motivated to do. They do the things that they on some level want to do, right? Like that's why when someone's got the option to read a book or like Netflix is Netflix is right there. They're like, well, I would rather, you know, I want to watch TV. <laughs> so they're motivated by that, you know, desire to be entertained or whatever it is. So I think there's the level of like, you know, when you're embodying worthiness, like, I think there is that level too of, are you living it? Are you living that belief out? Like, are you doing things that show you believe you're worthy? You know, are you taking care of yourself? Are you, and this is stuff that I, that I feel like I'm working through and like sitting with. It's like, 
okay, well, when I have this choice of like, I can sit here and rot on my couch for an hour, I could like take the effort and like do something to get my body moving. Cause I know that that helps move energy and it makes me feel better. And I have a choice. And do I feel worthy of feeling good? Well, if it's yes, then I will probably do something that makes me feel good. If I don't feel worthy of feeling good, then I'll probably do something that makes me continue to feel if I'm in a low energy, you know, I'll just maintain that energy because maybe I don't believe I'm worthy of feeling better. And I think that I've had to really question my motivations based on my actions sometimes, like to reverse engineer it. It's like, what do I actually believe I'm worthy of based on what I do consistently? Mm, I love that you brought it there. That is so true too. That is, that is really important because it is, it's like, it's also in a way it's like becoming worthy, you know, of course we're already in, we're already infinitely worthy, innately worthy because we are children of God. It's just how it is. But then I think there is, there is that level of like becoming worthy, you know, whatever that means to you, like, like living a worthy life that again, it's like, whatever that means to you to step into that. I think that's really important, you know, becoming worthy having that integrity, having that discipline, having that love, having that compassion, you know, these kinds of qualities that we have to develop, you know, to step into our worthiness. Yeah. And I'm realizing now, and I don't feel like there's any inherent, like it's not necessarily better to read a book than watch Netflix every in every case scenario. This is like the mm -hmm. overthinker in me. Like there's times when I feel like, you know, it watching that movie, it might be a childhood movie that makes you feel really good. And, or like, it's inspiring to you, whatever. But you you know internally when you're making a decision based off like, this is good for me and I'm doing it because it's good for me and I'm doing this because maybe subconsciously or consciously I'm sabotaging myself because of fear. And this almost goes back to the conversation that we had about abundance the first time or in a previous episode where I was saying like, sometimes abundance can feel scary if you're used to scarcity. And so sometimes you will do things consciously and subconsciously to keep yourself at a familiar baseline because it actually feels kind of scary to shift into something that's foreign because I mean that's the ego the ego tries to keep us safe um and it's like well I know what to do in this case scenario you know I know what to do when you're like stressed out all the time about how to pay your bills I don't really know what it's like you know to not feel that so like maybe we should just keep doing this because this is what this is good for us we know this yeah yeah that's so true and that's i think that's why you know i love encouraging myself to do new things you know and to try new things and unfamiliar things and i love encouraging others as well because it's just a way to kind of like flex that muscle you know of of change of doing things unfamiliar because kind of like exactly like how you said of like the i don't know if i can do it like the shadow the shadow hand it's so true it's like the and, and, and even to take that analogy further, it's like if you were like genuinely like looking at that shadow, thinking about how huge it is, the more you sit there and watch it and just like contemplate on how freaky and big that is, you know, with anything or like, you know, if you've ever like jumped off the high dive, you know, it's like high diving board. It's like the more you stand up there and just look down and feel that guttural like fear you're literally just like torturing yourself you know you're you're gonna create all these story you're just building you're gassing up all this stuff and and then it's like when you finally just do it you always find that like you just did it like you just did it like you don't you don't you don't know how like something in you just showed up and did it and and it was not as hard as you thought it was going to be i've had this experience so many times could you give up is there an example that you feel comfortable sharing? Yeah, of course. A lot, a lot of times, you know, one example would be um, like going to the open mic and performing, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, like the time before that, like I wouldn't even let myself think about it. You know, like I was prepared, like I practiced the songs, but I didn't even let myself think about it because I knew that all I'm going to do is like hype myself up, not in a positive way, but like in a like fearful way. So I was like, not, not even going to think about it at all. And um you know, as much as I could, but, you know, it's still, especially like the few minutes before I could just feel it. I was like, oh gosh, here we go. Like just start. And then like, why am I even scared? I don't even know. Um, but it's just like, you can just feel like that, that building up, um, especially that pressure is so big having put off performing for so long. It's like such a huge pressure there for me. 
And so all these things that could go wrong or all of these fears, all of these energies, and then just doing it. And I think a lot of artists can share an experience like this. It's like, I almost don't even remember that. Like it was so quick, like it was so quick. I would, and then like, even like learning to just be in the moment because you have to be, because you show up. Like once you show up, you're just there. You just have to do it. And even if you make a mistake, it's literally not a big deal. Like, um, so that's that's one that's one experience. It, 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 and it really did, it went by so fast. And then once it was over, I felt so good about myself because I knew that in my opinion, the only failure was if I didn't do it, you know, at that day, because I already committed to doing it, you know, I committed to doing it to myself. So things like that, or even like making these videos, whether it's with you, or by myself, there's so many times when my when my ego is like, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about, what if I sound silly, like no one's gonna care, like all of these like kinds of things that come up for everyone, like they still come up. Um, and just learning to kind of like, yes okay and then like kind of put them to the side and just show up and we always have these amazing conversations that just um uh, like they just like rise out of seemingly nowhere because it's like we just show up like it's not that hard like we don't need to have like it's like the way the ego wants to paint all these fantasies on things is it's really we i think we really have to be aware of it you know for our own kind of like successful endeavors because it's just an illusion I definitely relate to it. Like, it's like the getting there is the hardest part, you know, especially with recording. It's like, uh, you know, it's like, what am I doing? Sometimes I'm just like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, sometimes I catch myself and I'm like, why do I think I'm doing so I really feel like I have something that valuable to say that I'm trying to record a podcast. You know, like, these are the things that go through my head or like, you know, then that thing comes in of like, huh, what if like people I know see it and then they're like, you're weird. <laughs> you know, just like all this stuff that that comes up, which is just like, you know, like the ego. A lot of it's just like little ego stuff. And sometimes it's pretty convincing because the ego knows us really well. <laughs> Ego's got like a front row seat to every insecurity, every doubt, you know, it's generating a lot of them. <laughs> um, so yeah, I definitely relate to that. And I feel like we've had this conversation, but it's coming up for me again because, um, you know, I recognized in myself like this difference between entitlement and worthiness because entitlement will tell you, you know, will have you thinking, I'm owed this. Like, I'm owed this experience. I'm owed people to feel this way towards me or whatever. And worthiness is just recognizing like, I am enough to experience, like I am worthy of this experience, which that can motivate you. That can push you. Entitlement can stagnate you because entitlement can tell you like, well, that should have happened by now, or this should be this, or that should be that. And it keeps you stuck rationalizing your current situation. But worthiness can push you to do that thing. Like, like you're saying, like, I'm worthy of like expanding myself. So I'm going to go do this open mic. You know, I'm worthy of friendships. So I'm going to go out and see what happens, you know, but entitlement would be like, well, I should have friends. <laughs> it's like, well, but what are you doing? You know, it's like, what are you doing to get friends? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's such an important distinction. I feel like that distinction needs um, being made, especially in these times. Um, yeah. I think sometimes like sometimes the lines between that can be blurry and, it's only a detriment to you, you know, because it's like if you're having that entitled attitude, which, you know, I'm also definitely guilty of sometimes it's um, it's like it's it's strange. You know, it's like it, it's a very um, ingrateful kind of way to live, actually. Like that's that's the weird that's the weird thing about um, being unworthy. Unworthy is, unworthiness is one of those things, too, that it's one of those like kind of codependent traits that feels harmless. It's like, well. It's okay. It's not like I'm hurting anyone, but it's like, it's actually so destructive. You know, it's like, not only are you kind of like killing yourself slowly, but you're also kind of like, um, holding out on like, whatever it is that you're here to like share with the world, you know, and just emanate from, you know, so when you're unworthy, it's like, a lot of times it, it sparks also like this, this just sort of like sensation of, um, desperation and edginess and just like, in a way greed like not you know normally people think like greed of like narcissistically like I, I I you know I need to like have everything 
but it's kind of the same thing I think with like unworthiness it's like if I don't have everything then I'm just not enough like I'm just not good enough you know it's kind of the same thing on the opposite spectrum so I think when you look at it like that it's even more sort of like you know it's more I guess um inspiring to want to work through those things because it's it's not harmless you know it's like it's harming you you know first of all and then it's like indirectly you know it's not in a, of course I don't mean that in a guilty or shameful way but just as like more motivation to start to love yourself <laughs> yeah the thought that was coming through for me before this is like um and I shared it with you already but it was like don't be afraid to look where and when it hurts you know, a lot of times when there's pain and like, even like physically, like if someone, I've seen this happen a lot. I've done this a lot. Like you, you hit your leg on something, you go, Oh, and you immediately turn away. Like, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Cause if I see it, there's going to hurt worse. <laughs> like if it's bleeding, then I'm going to, I'm going to freak out, <laughs> you know, but that was one thing that was, I thought about again with what you're saying. It's like, you know, it's not to shame. It's to say like, you know, you kind of have to look where it hurts in order to contend with what's there. Like if you don't look at it, it doesn't make it not there. It doesn't make it go away. And depending on what kind of wound or, you know, if you think about it physically, if you don't treat a wound, it often gets infected. And then what happens? The infection spreads. And I think that often happens spiritually too with, with these, these emotional wounds, you know, we, Oh, I don't want to think about that. And then it kind of just spreads to like all these areas of our life and it, causes all kinds of literally physical illnesses a lot of times, but our relationships are unhealthy. Our relationship with ourself is not healthy. So yeah, it's like, no, you don't shame yourself, but it's like, if you, if we're not honest that this is there, that this is something that we have to contend with, you know, um, it's just, it just, it's bad news bears for us, you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so good. Um, you made me think of a lot of things with that. Um, but yeah, it, it, because it's like, that's something I think we're kind of programmed to do is to try to want to avoid these things. And I myself even still do it, even though, you know, I, I, I know this stuff like, you know, for years, um, just learning to, the less you procrastinate on facing something when it comes up, the happier you're, you're just going to be. Because once something comes up, it's up. So if you keep trying to shove it back, you're literally going to have this underlying anxiety or depression or whatever everywhere you go. And and, and it won't hide. Like, it'll, it'll come up in this conversation. It'll come up in this project. It'll come. It's like, so the sooner you just stop trying to, like, avoid it and push through and, like, just sit with it, the better your life is going to be. Because, yeah, it's going to hurt, but you're going to face it. And then you're going to learn the lessons that are embedded in it that are not random. Like, that's another important thing. It's not just random lessons. These are, like, literally, perfectly, divinely designed lessons that you literally need mm -hmm. to hear right now. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. And you reminded me of a quote, and I don't know if I shared it. Okay, sorry. I wasn't trying to cut you off. It was just... No, go ahead. Go. I, I'm trying to find it. Oh, no. I'm going to be so embarrassed if I can't find it. I found <laughs> it. I don't know if I shared this with you or on the podcast. I might have, but it's so good. Your conflicts, all the difficult things, the problematic situations in your life are not chance or haphazard. They are actually yours. They're specifically yours, designed for you by a part of you that loves you more than anything else. The part of you that loves you more than anything else has created roadblocks to lead you to yourself. You are not going in the right di direction unless there is something pricking you in the side telling you, look here, this way. That part of you loves you so much that it doesn't want you to lose the chance. It will go to extreme measures to wake you up. It will make you suffer greatly if you don't listen. What else can it do? That's its purpose. A.H. Lamas is the person that, did I ever share that with you? No, that's incredible. Full goosebumps everywhere. And it's what you were saying, but it was just like, boom, quote came back into my head. I feel like we could keep talking about this for forever because I it's like such a for me really pertinent conversation as always like I feel like every time we have a conversation I'm like yeah this conversation feels designed for me <laughs> because you know especially the part where you said you know like you won't be able to hide that anxiety it'll just be there like in everything you do once something is up it's there I was like 
I wish that wasn't true, but I know personally that it is, <laughs> you know, like I wish I didn't know that it was true, but I do. Cause I, I feel that like, damn. Earth is, earth is tough. Earth is a tough place. I don't think anyone would deny that earth is one of the toughest places to be. And so, you know, we're all truly some warriors. So we really have to give ourselves credit. And the last thing I just want to add on, on all of that is, you know, as far as being, it's, it's, I think one of the reasons we resist it is it's like, it's, it's, you have to be vulnerable first and foremost with yourself, you know, you have to be vulnerable. Um, and something I've learned so deeply is that even it's like, if you don't, if you're not being vulnerable, you're not going to access really deep mystical parts of life. And you're going to be really missing out, honestly, you know, because if you're not being vulnerable, you're going to probably be living a robotic life. That's very mundane. And for me personally, I think for most people, I refuse to live that way. So it's like, that's, you know, just another beauty of um, learning how to be vulnerable, you know, with yourself and, you know, with people you trust is that's, that's always going to be what brings out the literal magic of life. It feels like the equivalent of like premium gas, like, you know, <laughs> like highest quality. I, I wanted to end on this conversation made me think of a poem that I wrote a while ago. And I wanted to share with that as my final thought. So before I do that, I wanted to ask you, Reagan, any final thoughts? I think that was my final thought. I feel so complete with this. Literally, just this conversation, I feel like my heart has like opened up so much. And I'm so grateful because everything that we're talking about, you know, is also pertinent to me. You know, I've been going through it, um, just feeling these really deep emotions. It's very heavy. You know, it's, it's like we got a really... Again, I'll never stop saying it. Just have so much courage and compassion for ourselves and credit, you know, credit for what we're doing is so much bigger than we often realize. So, you know, I tell that to myself and I tell that to you and to everyone listening. I think that's so important because it, it's in alignment with everything else, you know, we talked about, which is like, you don't have to wait to give yourself credit. Like You can do it right now, you know, even even showing up and like, I feel like even listening to a conversation like this, because I feel like we challenge ourselves so much. And that's really what it is. It's like, we're challenging ourselves, you know? And I love that, you know, we're just really honest. Like this is stuff that we're saying because we're working through it or have worked through it or whatever, not from a place of like guru on the mountaintop, more like, you know, shoveling dirt in the trenches. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, it's like just down, you know, doing, doing our best to navigate this human experience, you know? So I agree. And I co-sign that, like the importance of compassion and, and giving ourselves credit where, you know, credit is due, but um, not an entitled way, in a worthiness way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the poem is, um, some parts of me are like an abandoned building. There are parts of me that I don't visit often that I shame and wish didn't exist. Parts of me that grew like mold on a bathroom wall. Parts of me that are charred like when a fire is left unattended for too long. Some of the glass mirrors are broken. The shards must have gotten in my eyes. I haven't been able to see clearly past all of the scarring. The rooms aren't beyond mending, and just because something was abandoned doesn't mean it was unworthy of love. It will take time to sweep up the dust and to stop sneezing from all the seemingly never-ending soot, but one day... I'll have redecorated every inch. But honestly, there's a certain gratitude I have that the walls are still standing at all. And if I listen really closely, I can hear them saying, welcome home. Oh, on that note, <laughs> Reagan has left the building. <laughs> I hope it was still recording for you. No, it was. But okay. I'm Bianca. And I'm Reagan. And this has been a Breath of Fresh Air podcast. Thank you so much for listening.